Hello everyone and welcome to the After Hours Gaming League. This is the quarterfinals of the 2015 season. Game 2 between Microsoft One and Facebook of Feed Story. Of course, since it is Game 2, these sides have now reversed. It is going to be... Excuse me, it's going to be Microsoft One on the red side and Facebook A Feed Story on the blue side this time around. And we have seen some minor tweaks to the Pikman phase here. That Callista going to be coming out uh, from the uh, Facebook A Feed Story side. This time leaving that Shivana open. Or excuse me, uh, the Callista coming out for them and the Ziggs ban coming out from the uh, Microsoft One team leaves the Shivana open. So we do see that Shivana snatched up here. Uh, it was not the first pick, uh, but definitely was secured uh, for them in the game here. We saw, of course, that LeBlanc being picked into the Velkaz. Going to definitely try and blow up that Velkaz as much as possible throughout the early stages of the game here. Uh, once we saw that the uh, Pony was picked up, I was very curious to see if it was going to be a Hecarim that ran uh, uh, Smite or Ignite. Uh, in the last game we did of course see that Hecarim run Teleport Ignite. Uh, certainly not that it didn't work out well for him, I've just, uh, and I've been seeing a transition more back away from the jungle items in the top lane, more towards a, a stand, what well, used to be at least standard uh, top lane builds with general items, no Smite, uh, no challenging Smite. None of that silliness here, but it looks like uh, we are going to be seeing that coming out of Shivana, of course, in the top lane, uh, looking to get uh, tanky as possible here. Be a real uh, front line for her team, while well, of course still bringing out that uh, respectable amount of mix damage um, that can tear anyone to shreds who doesn't take her seriously enough. Um, of course, that new new uh, Janna being picked up as well going to create a lot of power for the Sivir here. Of course, Janna throwing on that shield uh, on top of Sivir to give her that bonus AD and Nunu blood boiling her right as that uh, shield from Janna comes on. Sivir is going to be able to walk right into the middle of the team. Uh, well, perhaps that's a bit of an overstatement. She's going to be able to walk more towards the front line of her team and really get a lot of those boomerang blades out uh, get a lot of the uh, bouncing uh, shots out on multiple members of the team during these team fights here. You can get a lot of damage out with that spell shield up. She will have a little bit more security to get a, a bit more into the thick of things and uh, get up close and personal and put out that damage as much as possible here. We are seeing uh, the Morgana pickup in the bottom lane running without ignite rather than exhaust. Uh, you know, I do think that that's probably a correct choice here. Um, it would be nice to have the exhaust for Vel'Koz. Uh, and if Sivir does get a little bit ahead, you're going to wish you had exhaust for Sivir. <laughs> but uh, Morgana, especially since she can run right into the thick of things here uh, and then slam down her ultimate in that Zonia's, she's going to be always able to get a good position on an exhaust target. So opting for that Ignite means that they are looking for some kill pressure in lane. Of course, Sivir, uh, thought to be a lane bully of how much she can just shove in that wave uh, with all of that AoE spells uh, to really push in hard. Kog'Maw is somebody who definitely uh, brings a lot of power to the laning phase himself as well, especially uh, depending on the build you see being taken by the Kog'Maw. If we do see that Trinity Force first, that uh, Kogma is going to do a lot of damage uh, in this early and mid game. So, bringing that Ignite uh, to the lane with Kogma uh, has the possibility to make this Kogma erupt into a force that they don't want to deal with, but don't have any option because it's Kogma. So, we will see how this works out. There's a lot of possibilities uh, for ways this game can go, and of course, uh, there's always the constant threat of just LeBlanc being left alone in that lane with Vel'Koz and having to be something Vel'Koz can't really handle. Um, being able to just ju jump in and 
uh, effectively dodge around the knockup that Velkoz can provide, which is really his only source of CC. Of course, there is that slow, uh, but that slow much less important uh, than the actual knockup in this matchup against LeBlanc here uh, because of her distortion uh, or her diving inability uh, to get in and get a lot of damage and land those chains at nearly a point blank range and not really have too much Velkoz can do about that. But if this Velkoz can survive that lane, let alone if this Velkoz can win that lane, but if that Velkoz can survive this lane against LeBlanc, there is absolutely the possibility that this Velkoz can be the person for his team that tears through people in this late game. I mean, we talk about um, when we've seen in these past couple games Jinx being picked up as a sort of a late game hyper carry. Velkoz would be the AP equivalent of that. <laughs> Velkoz, uh, though we don't see him very often, it is because of his vulnerability during the laning phase to people like LeBlanc who can uh, jump in on him and bring a lot of damage straight to his face. But in later game team fights, if there's some initial CC being brought from, say, uh, Shivana diving in and separating out a chunk of the team, Jana throwing a twister in and knocking people up, Velkoz can throw down uh, his CC, knock somebody up, and then just immediately slam out that ultimate and pick through that true damage on tons of people. And, I mean, that's... When you see a late game Velkaz burning through people with his ultimate, it is a sight to behold, especially with this skin. I am all of a sudden uh, biased now in favor of that Velkaz uh, for using that skin, because that skin is uh, so awesome. Uh, <laughs> anyways, we do see... Uh, sort of standard picks coming out here. Shivana actually opting to go for the Ruby Crystal first. And that is a Q onto that Nunu from Morgana. I mean, Nunu, so tanky early on, probably going to be just fine here. Going to simply walk away back to that inner turret. No big deal here. Shivana uh, stepping pretty far forward. Oh, <laughs> the Spell Thief's procs on those Qs. Oh, so delicious. Lots of gold going over to that Morgana. Super worth just for that. Uh, of course, Shivana did go fairly deep, so she was able to throw down uh, a deep reward at that red. So we're going to see the wards thrown down at a minute 15 here, as per usual, to keep those uh, that deep vision out. Unfortunately uh, for this team, they do not know that this ward, a little bit uh, non-standard here, placed not quite over here, but in this position, so they can spot people coming through the base gate, and they will not have information that Nunu and Shivana are hanging out on the, or excuse me, that Nunu uh, is up on the top side of the map there. And Shivana actually going to opt to start with those Razor Beaks there. And LeBlanc already looking to fight here. Not too much damage on at this stage in the game. Uh, but that's already an example of the aggressiveness this LeBlanc is going to bring all laning phase, so... We'll see if this Velkaz is well versed enough in this matchup to be able to deal with that, or if he has some uh, troubles here. So we see a bit of a slugfest there in the bottom lane, not too much happening right now, Shabana, of course, with a slight level advantage for a little while against Hakon, though he does level up off that creep wave. Be able to fight that one out. John is caught out right outside the bush too, so that's going to be a lot of autos coming from uh, the bush, uh, the fog of war rather. Great side step there of Morgana Q. the kill potential that we see in that mid lane. Velkaz does make it out alive, but it takes both his summers here. Uh, the LeBlanc passive is popped in the middle lane here. 
so didn't uh, lose everything there. Of course, did also force, uh, did also take rather the ignite from that LeBlanc. So uh, after this next back here, Velkaz is going to be a little bit safer in lane for a little while. At least. He does need to be careful about shoving up though. There's Morgana actually second four just slamming down that ignite. But there is the Nunu. He's going to get there, and that first blood will actually go to Janna. The red buff not burning quickly enough. Janna, uh, again, I believe the second time today, confirmed OP and uh, stepped way too far forward. Did Velkaz that flash at the end, beating out the second proc. Very close there to actually getting the return kill, but absolutely not worth it if you are Velkaz, in my opinion. I do not think that uh, it's worth trading a kill. Even if he were able to trade that kill with LeBlanc, I would have much rather preferred he simply go back and just accept a little bit of a CS discrepancy there, uh, which he's going to have to deal with regardless. So you see Nunu doing his rounds through the enemy jungle there. And so Zwani looks to do the same, throwing down a deep ward on those wolves. Shivana is still actually uh, going for that phage here, it appears. Not going to make use of that smite just yet. Uh, as far as direct combat is used, of course. going to be surely going to that uh, Grom on near cooldown, if not actually on cooldown, to get the most out of that uh, smite summer spell that she can. With spell shield there from Sivir, and be preventing any Q shenanigans there. So you see, Janna does get caught by the Morgana, and there's a lot of damage on her, but a lot of damage returned just from the Sivir stepping forward, throwing a single auto and a boomerang blade out. So Shivana possibly thinking about going hard there in the top lane, but both that talk is right now in the mid lane. That's a lot of damage going on that Velkaz again from uh, LeBlanc. Nothing does come of the top lane. Shivana opting to save her ultimate there, not go for a risky dive. Probably the safer play in the long term. That does mean Hecarim is able to teleport right back top here as uh, Shivana throws down a deep forward looks for that uh, red buff, sees it's not there, but that is going to be Nunu in the meantime, soloing out that uh, dragon. And speaking of dragons, here it is LeBlanc, getting a lot of damage back onto Shivana, not immediately popping that ultimate there to try and interrupt the jump. Great sidestep by Nunu, very disciplined choice there to go back and have the confidence that he can sidestep that. Very well played there, possibly saving his life. Of course, he did have the bot lane very nearby, so he was probably all right anyway, but a very strong play there and a good uh, mechanical uh, demonstration of his abilities. And will that red buff, or excuse me, will that ignite be enough? No. The health pot and the uh, heal, the summoner heal, is going to be enough to protect him and make sure he makes it out alive there. Multiple times now, uh, Velkaz making out by the skin of his teeth, and that's exactly what this Velkaz needs to do right now. Of course, he is uh, behind quite a bit in CS, but as long as he's not giving up kills to that uh, Siobhan, or excuse me, to <laughs> see Siobhan on the screen, to that LeBlanc, that's what he needs to be concerned about. He did give up one kill earlier, but... If he can keep it at just one, that will prevent LeBlanc from becoming that uh, nightmare roaming assassination threat. And that's what his uh, number one priority needs to be right now, ensuring uh, that LeBlanc stays within uh, 
reasonable lane, guys. We see the ultimate being thrown out from Hecarim, and Shivana just going to do a quick little circle there. Did pop her ultimate as well to get the actual uh, bonus resistance there. And the uh, tornado from Janna just barely south of this bot lane here on the red side. So it looks like they will most likely get out of there. Uh, Sivir, of course, did pop their ultimate. It looks like we do have some lag from Velkaz here. Going to uh, reconnect very quickly. Yeah, this is actually is very interesting. I do believe Sivir does have both those cooldowns going right now, so I think it's just autos for her. But she does have that speed up, so uh, the question is, I mean, what's obviously better is Sivir's ultimate rather than summoner heal. Uh, but Sivir does also have summoner heal available to herself, so she might pop that for a little extra uh, speed here. We'll see what happens here as we restart the game now. And there's the beautiful flash there. No hesitation. Coming back into it now is okay. If they can get uh, one or two autos, I need to get out of here right now. And Nunu, uh, content to just channel there. Knowing Velkaz is in tow. Velkaz does have that ultimate. Trying to get into there. And there's the block though, getting that up. And there's the ultimate coming out from Velkaz. Doesn't get the kill on the Sejuani. So low, but gonna make it out alive. An unfortunate turn of events there. Valkaz absolutely needed that. And, uh, you know, LeBlanc, from that damage she's had uh, in lane, the zoning potential that she's gotten from that, the respect she's commanded from Valkaz, has put him behind in items to where he didn't have the damage he needed. The second Dorn's Blade not being enough for him to uh, finish off that set one, and it does cost him uh, eventually a kill. That is desperately needed, so. The, uh, the lane with LeBlanc already starting to bear fruit here, showing why that is a very strong counter pick. But we will see uh, if Velkos can start to stabilize here, stabilize here, of course, with that chalice now complete. It has a little bit more resistance here. LeBlanc does miss the chains that time around. You see us being pulled right up top here, Morgana. Just hanging out though, does land the bunny. That's a lot of damage. The last tick of ignite. Uh, not even the last tick of ignite, but a tick of ignite. Uh, about midway through. Gonna be enough to get the kill there. And Sejuani is hanging around. Hanging around. Gonna spot out that ward, clear it out with the pink, but that is a kill on to Morgana here. Of course, we do see Kogma opting to go with the more damage uh, directly build here. Uh, going for that Blade of the Rune King first, as we see the Cutlass built up here. Not quite enough damage available to take out that Morgana, but they will be able to clear out this pink board here. This Kogma looks to throw a little bit of rest there, not quite able to hit the mark. We see LeBlanc. Uh, gonna be heading back to base here. Uh, she is able to complete that with Fiends upon uh, returning back to the shop there. This bottom lane is in a bit of peril right now for the blue side here. There's a good snowball there. There's no block shield yet. There it is right now. And that's going to be the end of the channel early to capture right on the tip and get the kill. And the turret shots going on to the carry. So low is Sivir. She's got to be very careful here. She does make it out alive. The Janna Tornado is going to be enough to make sure she's all right here. As we see LeBlanc again, back to bullying that Velkaz around in lane. She 
Ivana perhaps trying to bait it out. She does ult away there. Looking to try and uh, prevent any follow-up aggression here by clearing out those minions. Velkos is looking to roam up, unfortunately. Doesn't catch him out, so he's going to just head back to his lane and uh, do his best to farm out under that LeBlanc pressure. LeBlanc continues to widen the gap, though. Nearly 50 CS difference here in the mid lane. If you're going to blind pick that Velkos, you have to be ready for this matchup. This is a very common counter pick. So to uh, be bullied about this hard, I mean, this is why we don't see Velkos at least pick blind in the mid lane very often. Overall, right now, the gold lead is not that large. One dragon is in favor of the blue side here, while the red side does have a little bit over a 1k gold advantage. Nothing huge in favor of either side right now. Fairly even for both sides. And Morgana does land a beautiful Q there. Uh, it doesn't look like he knew she was in the facility, so she's going to get blown up. He's going to get blown up by the LeBlanc who comes in, and there's the double kill. Now we have a LeBlanc in the game. Shivana now, with that challenging smite, is able to fight out that Akron and get a lot of return damage on him. And it does appear that that longsword, of course, was not for Paige, uh, which I thought would be a little strange there. Uh, there is, of course, uh, new Paige possibilities in this shop through different build paths that have been updated in this previous patch, but no, that was just a long sword uh, for a bit of uh, extra AD in that lane. Of course, that health was eventually upgraded to a bombing cinder, and then the uh, enchantment here. You see Hecarim doing his best to rock that sheen and melt through that turret, but there's caught out his Janna not binding so much damage. Kogma not able to get that ultimate out to finish her off though, so she will make it out with her life intact, but just barely. As Shivana looking to fight out that hacker, I'm just gonna force him back there. He does have teleport available though, so actually I'm gonna cancel that recall look to try and pick up this wave. I think you should correctly that Shivana is gonna go out on ward duty. He does have some vision there to see that good spell shield from Sivir to block out that Morgana Q. And for poor Velkos trying his best to farm from a distance, but absolutely unable to. Flash heal and the cell pod not gonna be enough. And that will be another kill onto LeBlanc. LeBlanc simply too far ahead at this point in the game. 4 0 1 against the 0 3 0 Velkos. I mean, that's. A nightmare scenario if you're Velkaz. You definitely uh, are going to be unsafe in your own lane. I, I mean, at this point, it might be the prudent thing to uh, intentionally just sort of give up the mid lane turret on the outer turret so you can let that wave push a little bit closer to you, get a little bit more protection there. Of course, we see that Nunu coming into the bot lane. Trying to make things happen out here. The Sejuani ultimate does not land. A lot of damage there, but disengage Queen Janna coming in to save the day. Does protect herself with the shield, so Kogma not going to be able to be enough. But here is LeBlanc. They're going to opt to go for the Nunu. The harder the prey, the more rewarding the kill, and that is Nunu going down. The Sejuani. Ooh, wow, so close. Cutting it very close with her own life. Playing with fire under that turret. Sub 100 hit points there. We see LeBlanc coming back in again, trying to find out that Velkov, and will be taking out Kogma before he falls, uh, who was unfortunately the only one within that aggro range. Apologies for the V uh, in chat uh, stuff. But anyways, 
Uh, pay, pay no attention to the man behind the chat. Anyways, uh, looking back into this top lane here, uh, we see the CS discrepancy even in these amongst these top laners here, starting to build a 23 CS lead for that Hecarim, uh, a nearly 20 CS lead for that Sejuani, LeBlanc absolutely annihilating Beltaz, uh, even in just regards uh, to CS here. Um, and Kogma, the only one behind on his team, uh, as far as his matchup is concerned. Lots of damage coming out onto that LeBlanc. Jana, way, way confident in herself, stepping out uh, without that um, health from the Nunu following her back. Uh, did, of course, have Sivir in tow, but <laughs> very, very uh, confident Jana, knowing those cooldowns were down, that uh, LeBlanc came nothing without her cooldowns, so. Good catch there from Morgana. Unfortunately, that uh, spell shield from Sivir not going to be out in time there. Rock coming in for that poke onto the Nunu. Nunu taking quite low. Does not have that much health built up just yet. Only a Sight Stone and an extra Ruby Crystal. Absolutely deleted is Nunu actually right as we were talking about that. But that's, oh goodness, utter destruction going out of chaotic team fight here. And that is the Velkaz ultimate when Velkaz isn't fed. Velkaz feels like he tickles if he gets behind, especially when he shut down this hard. And that is going to be LeBlanc surviving somehow all of this damage. Will Shivana make it out alive? She will. But overall a three for nothing as the turret falls in the bottom lane. Wow, this has got to be a very painful moment right now uh, for this Microsoft uh, One team here. Or, well, not for the Microsoft One team, but for the Facebook, a feed story team here. Uh, there, it's just got to feel like there's nothing you can do when you're in a position where there's an 8 0 and 1 LeBlanc so far ahead um, of everyone in this game at this point. And Kong is certainly a force to be reckoned with as well. Even though he's not uh, the recipient of tons of kills, he has been involved in four of them and is uh, essentially at a draw a little bit of an advantage here when compared to items to that Sivir just because he has that farm advantage, so... And again, when we do look at the CS score right now, uh, the... Uh, uh, it's only about a 7k gold deficit for the blue side. This is not something that can't be recovered from uh, by any means. It's just a matter of maintaining that positive mentality, keeping yourself studious, warding that jungle, not letting yourselves uh, fall into bad habits. Uh, and it looks like there are a lot of defensive wards, so a lot of vision throughout their jungle. They are making the right decisions as far as that is concerned. Uh, but of course, the red side being very studious in that as well. Shivana does take down the top lane tower at last, which will be very helpful for your team, getting a lot of gold coming out uh, from that global gold. See Hecarim bolting in just to show that Shivana who's boss. He will be looking for her. He does find her! And that is the Shivana with the ultimate available. Hecarim to chase her into minions is very confident. There's the smite coming out from Shivana. And that is a bit of a mistake there from Hecarim. Though, at the exact same time that Velkaz goes down another time. Silver so doing her best to get out of there, but there's the ultimate from Sejuani. Gonna be going down. Uh, despite the out 1v1 uh, in the top lane, that's a 2v2 overall on the map. So, I mean, if they can continue to get these 2v2s working out, uh, that will close, not necessarily close the gold gap, but it will make the gold gap far more insignificant here. So that would be uh, advantageous overall should they be able to continue this uh, much longer here. Akram, of course. Very mannered in that top lane, congratulating the outplay there uh, from that Shivana, giving the mannered well played. Always good to see that positive attitude 
in those uh, situations there. One of the best things, of course, about the After Hours Gaming League here. Uh, we do, we certainly do mean business, but at the same time, we're here to have fun. So, always nice to see people uh, who have that positive attitude, even when things aren't going quite their way here. We do see um, some wards being cleared out here, trying to get a little bit more control of their own jungle area. As Shivana looking to fight that Hecarim again, does throw down the smite, the challenge has been made. Will it be accepted? Hecarim waiting, trying to bait it out, but no, actually can't quite make it over the wall, and the ultimate from Shivana is needed. He kept dancing around that wall, trying to bait out, hey, I'm going to ult over this way, hey, I'm going to ult over this way. Shivana, very great play there to stay away, be studious, wait there for the last moment. The flash, oh, the Janna heal coming out just a little too late there. Unfortunately, not going to make it in time to save that Newton. But again, that Shivana, very holding on her ultimate, not jumping the gun there, not trying to knock Hecarim into a certain area to make sure she knows where he's at, knowing that he has that ultimate available, waiting for him to use the ultimate, and trusting that she can follow. And of course, it's unfortunate that Hecarim did uh, ult part of the wall. It was just a little too thick for him, but a uh, very studious play. She does have to ult in the end regardless, so overall, not a uh, huge difference if he had made that wall or not. But Shivana looking to try and be the hero for her team here, along with that Jana. But Sour Splinch again. I mean, it's just so horrible when you're in this sort of position. When you're 1 in 7, there's a 10 0 and 2 LeBlanc. There's nothing you can do at this point. LeBlanc is too far out of control for you. When those uh, catches happen, when LeBlanc is just in the area, you've got to accept that that's just what happens to you nowadays. And you got to not let it get to you. You got to just feel okay with what happens. You know, this is the game you're playing right now. You are behind. That's the pain that you're suffering. And there's not much to do about that, so don't psych yourself out about it, you know? As uh, the uh, CC there, actually going to cost Shivana her life there. And trying to be here with Shivana, jumping in there, uh, going a little bit too aggressive. Uh, when that LeBlanc is around, there's too much damage potential to be brought out there. Of course, Morgana did blow the Q and ultimate immediately, so certainly commanded a lot of respect from that Shivana. Uh, did that Shivana, rather. But at the end of the day, uh, not going to be enough to get anything done there. So LeBlanc is going to take a snowball to the face, but Nunu's going to go ahead and head back to base and be just fine. Actually going to look to r roam on up to that top lane, trying to defend this push here as Akram shoves that wave on in. And of course we see one minute uh, left on the Dragon Timer. You see Sejuani and Kogma already positioning in that general area. Kogma gonna go push that wave out. Shivan, uh, excuse me, Sejuani gonna go uh, get some extra ward coverage. I do like uh, what I've been seeing here from this red side team, uh, investing in those trinket ward upgrades on the yellow trinkets here knowing that uh, they can afford with this much of a lead to find multiple pink wards uh, and just have plenty of pink wards available all the time here. That's what we see, three pink wards in that infantry, uh, excuse me, inventory I should say, uh, despite there's already many pink wards on the map right here. Kong actually looking to try and 1v2 here. It's a lot of damage. He does throw out the oracles and uh, will get that kill onto Janna eventually. There's the kill onto uh, Sivir, but actually Jana made it away. I cannot believe it. She will. She has to go down Sejuani. She eventually does. It does cost Sejuani the ultimate, but well worth it for a kill. Star Spinach has to run away here. Does flash away. The flash heal is enough to save him this time. And that's got to feel good for Velkaz actually making it out alive with those summoners, of course. Having to blow both of them it never really feels great, but actually being able to make it out this time, that's got to be... Uh, a little bit of a morale boost for him. Happy to see that here. and uh, You know, we see Sejuani falling back to that dragon. Gonna just solo it herself here. Pick up that critical third dragon for that bonus movement speed on her team. As that uh, bottom side jungle littered with wards. Uh, actually from both sides here, but uh, particularly from the red side. And there's, again, LeBlanc doing LeBlanc things. Uh, not really too much 
to be said about that. As we see the real battle in the game, the two and two top laners, one into one v one. And Brown Tiger, I'm thinking he bit off a bit more than you do, but all that thought LeBlanc doing more LeBlanc things. Even Nunu, tanky Nunu is not safe. Right now, the moral victory in the top lane does eventually go to Hecarim. As LeBlanc can't do LeBlanc things this time, unfortunately, for her. <laughs> but uh, that will be the mid lane outer turret going down. Uh, the morale victory uh, going over here to the Hecarim in the end as well as he did get the final kill over Shivana. Uh But in the end, that will be the victory going over to Microsoft 1 here. Uh, in a convincing 2-0 uh, in the quarterfinals here. They will be making it on to the semifinals next week, the round of four. Uh, again, looking at the scores for this game, it's a fairly straightforward story here. Uh, LeBlanc just hitting her like sweet four-item uh, chunk there right, er, right and early on in the game. And there's just nothing you can do about that at that point. Uh... I mean, there's not much to say. 13-0-2. When you've got that kind of a LeBlanc, the game's over. There's not... It's not about whether or not you can catch people in mistakes. Uh, you just got to try and outlast. And if you can't do that, if LeBlanc is uh, somebody who has their mechanics locked down at, at a sound level for their character, it's not going to make a difference. So you just got to sort of accept that, you know. This game got away from us. Uh, you got to try and repair... Uh, your mental fortitude for the next game. Unfortunately, this was the uh, rub match for Facebook of Feed Story, and uh, they were not able to get that uh, third game forced. So, unfortunately, uh, the Facebook of Feed Story will end, uh, despite having some very valiant stories along the way about when they were fed, uh, will end, ironically, in a story where LeBlanc got fed and simply could not be dealt with here. And... Uh, just very briefly, just out of curiosity, we do see Shivana putting up some strong numbers there, 16k damage, but uh, doesn't hold a candle to the LeBlanc, over 25k damage to champions in this game. So, you know, at the end of the day, nothing to be ashamed of. We've all had those games where the LeBlanc gets out of hand, there's just not much you can do about it. A strong fight put up in the first game as well by this Facebook of Feed Story team. Uh, so a very uh, strong fight overall. And again, that will be Microsoft 1 winning the series 2-0, proceeding into the quarter quarterfinals, semifinals. This was the quarterfinals. Pardon me. Proceeding into the semifinals next week. Uh, for all that information, without my uh, flubbing of the terminology, feel free to go to the lovely website displayed on your screen right now, AfterHoursGaming.tv. All of these schedules and upcoming matches and videos will be posted to that website. And of course... If you enjoy this commentary, please feel free to subscribe to this channel. I will be uh, casting the matches coming up in the semi semifinals and finals as well. So hopefully I can bring you guys a commentary you will enjoy for that as well. And bring these games to life for you guys. I, I'm really glad I am able to help contribute to this experience in AHGL. So I look forward to being able to continue to do so next week. Uh, again, for the uh, semifinals... The best, the round of four, going to be a very exciting time, and I might have a special treat in order for you guys with a possible dual cast. Uh, speaking with that, uh, with some uh, fellow casters here at AHGL, we'll see if we can get something a little, a little fancy set up for next week. But uh, for now, that is the uh, series, and thank you guys for uh, staying tuned. I hope you enjoyed the games and have a lovely rest of your weekend.